Hi everyone, welcome to Desert Isle Forge. My name is Tim and in this video series I'm going to teach you how to do ornamental metal forging. We're going to start from the ground up with the basics and move towards more complex tasks. But before we get started, I would like to talk about safety, tools and materials you need and how to set up your workplace. So get to it. The most common injury associated with forging is burns. To prevent such injury, we have to start with the proper attire. In our case, it consists of leather shoes or leather boots to prevent our feet from burning, uh, long pants, preferably made of cotton material uh, and a cotton shirt uh, to prevent synthetic materials melting on our skin if hot material gets contact with the shirt. Uh, in addition, I'm also wearing a, a leather apron to protect my pants and my groin area. I also wear hearing protection and eye protection. Hearing protection, uh, obviously, to prevent uh, hearing loss from loud noises, and eye protection to pr protect my eyes, especially when I'm working in horizontal position at the vise, uh, the hot scales can pop upwards and hit my eyes. So that's a very important thing. Another major issue we have to address is fire hazard. Uh, in order to prevent fires, you have to keep your uh, work environment free of fuel, flammable materials such as paints and thinners. Also try to set up shop in a building that has concrete or dirt floor so when something hot falls on the floor don't start a fire. Also be mindful when a finished product is placed on the ground uh, make sure there's no flammable materials around it. Also keep a fire extinguisher handy if something happens you can extinguish it quickly. For forging we need three essential tools. First one being a heat source that we heat our materials to forging temperature and we need two surfaces that we shape our material in between. One is being the anvil, the other one is being the hammer. Let's talk about the heat source first. There are three viable options for heat source. First one is traditional solid fuel forges using coke or coal. The second one is propane or natural gas forges. The third one is oxypropane or oxyacetylene torches. All of these has advantages and disadvantages as sometimes I use combination of these to achieve my tasks. Uh, but I'm going to talk about this more in detail in an upcoming series about tools of the trade. Anvils come in all shapes and sizes and configurations. If you cannot get your hand on an anvil, don't let it deter you from start forging. You can substitute it easily with a big hunk of steel, a piece of railroad rail or a heavy I-beam. Um, you can just use those to learn the basics and as you progress and decide that this is something you want to pursue, you can invest in an anvil, which can be a large investment up to $1,200. Let's talk about hammers. For forging, I recommend a cross pane blacksmithing hammer. Uh, in my opinion, this is the best option because there are techniques and tasks that you can only perform with the cross pane of a cross pane hammer. Also, you need a, a wide variety of uh, weights and sizes because some tasks need a lighter hammer, a smaller hammer, while others need uh, a large as eight pound hammers. Also, you can have sledge hammers, but uh, you have to have a striker for that. We're going to talk about it later as well. So another important tool in our arsenal is uh, forging tongs. Um, forging tongs are not as essential as hammer, anvil, and heat source, but they're going to be useful in the future to uh, do more complex tasks. Uh, you can just start without them, cutting a longer piece, forging the end, and then cutting it off. Uh, you can either buy them or forge your own. If your skill set is not advanced enough, uh, I'm going to show you a substitute for them. Uh, these are large uh, pliers or uh, tweezers and I'm going to teach you in an upcoming video how to forge these or create these 
and these are very basic skill set required. And these are pretty good handy tools to uh, um, handle small items in and out of the forge, holding it while you're heating them. So look out for the upcoming video on these. About the materials we need for these lessons, I would like to recommend you to go to your local steel supplier and get a 20 foot stick of each of the following items. A quarter inch, a three eighths, uh, a half inch, and a five eighths inch of square and round solid bars. Also a flat bar in the size of quarter by three quarter, quarter by one inch, quarter by inch and a half. If you need a different size of material for a specific lesson, I will point out in that video and let you know what we need. So before we wrap up this video, I'm going to talk about one more thing, and that is the anatomy of a hammer strike. My philosophy of forging is that I forge from dynamic impulse versus force or strength. So in order to do this, you need a hammer that's handle is about the length of your forearm. To measure this, you place the head of your hammer in your palm and extend your arms, and it should come up to your elbow joint. Then you grab the handle about one third from the end, loosely grabbing it, placing a thumb either on top or on the side. This allows you to use your wrist as a hinge point and controlling the hammer, pushing, pulling, and tilting sideways. When you come in to forge, you simply lift up the hammer and you aid the folding of the hammer with your arm and also with your whole body mechanics. This is like a dynamic movement. Uh, you don't push it, don't do a death grip that will uh, stiffen up your wrist and also the vibration will hurt you and your elbows and your wrist will eventually hurt. So I'm going to demonstrate this with the hot piece of steel. Uh, so stay tuned. So we have our uh, piece of steel ready, ready to forge. And we just lift our hammer and drive it down, drive it down. And you can see that my whole body is moving. I'm using my wrist is loose, not doing it for force, but dynamic impulse. That's very important. This way all your joints will be uh, much less stressed and you actually work much faster because you're using the hammer's weight. And just tap it, as you see I'm tapping it very loosely, very lightly. So this is the end of the first video. I hope you found something useful and interesting. The next one will be the first real forging lesson. If you would like to support my channel, please subscribe, like, share, and comment below. If you'd like to see my work, please visit my website, www.desertalforge.com. You can also connect me with on Facebook. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.